Hello and welcome to First Look. I'm Young John, and today we're going to take a look at QuadraClick's RBT mouse. And I'd like to thank QuadraClick for sending this guy over for review. And without further ado, we shall go ahead and unbox this guy. This is the unboxing of the QuadraClick's RBT mouse. This is the front of the box, the back of the box. On the side, it says your new ergonomic gaming unit is brought to you by QuadraClick's. On the other side, it says very quietly in black, RBT Rebel Reel 1.112. Here we are. You have your mouse here. And your little instruction manual. And that's all, folks. You get your instruction manual and your mouse. It looks like a regular, if not weirdly shaped mouse. It's got two buttons, it's got a scroll wheel, DPI button, and two side buttons. Uh, but that's where similarities end. Mouse design hasn't changed since its inception. I mean, it looks the same, it's used the same. So it's probably been designed by guys who got sick and tired of carpal tunnel syndrome, of having to spend years sitting at a desk with the same repetitive movement. Now they're out to save the two most important fingers that are used in a mouse, and also the two most important fingers used when you take selfies. <laughs> but all jokes aside, this mouse has a primary and a secondary objective. The primary objective being to eradicate carpal tunnel syndrome completely. The second objective is to curiously be a very good gaming mouse, and you don't have to be a gamer to use this mouse, obviously, but it's got the hardware built in. I mean, without question, you can use this for competitive gaming. Now, if you watch esports players, okay, in between games, they're always like massaging their hands, you know, or using like kind of heat pads or salon pass because they have, you know, Carpal tunnel syndrome, enhanced times 10 because they're madly clicking away at these buttons while trying to be precise in their movement. So it requires a lot of muscle usage. So what QuadraClix has done is fundamentally change the placement of the buttons. So if you have a regular mouse, let me grab one here that I have as an example. Here's a regular mouse and you normally grab it like this. And in order to press these two main buttons, you have to kind of curl your fingers. So you're putting a lot of stress in the muscles there and your muscles here, just in order to push down. So holding these fingers stiff like this takes a lot of effort. And people do this all day long for hours and hours, eight hours a day, you know, at their office or work. And uh, that's why they get carpal tunnel syndrome because they have to hold their fingers up into a curl and continuously keep them stiff as they keep pressing these buttons. So here's what QuadraClix did. You see the raised platform here that helps you keep your fingers steady like this. So when you click, the click isn't up in the front, it's up here high in the middle. So what ends up happening is instead of stiffening up your two fingers like that, you relax them. There's no power in this at all. You don't need to keep the stiff. You just loosen them up. And the only muscle you're using is to push this part here down on the button like that. So you can just kind of relax your fingers, have no pressure at all, and just press there. Look at that. Another wonderful aspect of this design is that there's a lot of airflow in your hand. I'm not grabbing this part here like I do with this regular mouse. When you're doing this, you're kind of resting your hand on this palm thing. And all you, and this part here where your palm rests right on top of the mouse is uh, where all like the dirt gathers and you know, it gets sweaty and sticky and everything like that. It's not a pleasant feeling, but that is done away with, with this. So. There's a lot of air and space down here. Your palm is never going to touch this part here. It never does. It just kind of, your fingers are resting here. So you have a lot of space underneath your hand there. However, everyone is so used to these typical mice that it's gonna be difficult. It's gonna take time for you to get used to a mouse like this one because you're not used to pressing with this part of your finger, and you're not used to relaxing this. You're gonna wanna come back to this and do this immediately. I mean, you know, you're used to that, right? It'll take a while to get used to clicking with relaxed fingers, but once you have it, it makes the biggest difference in the world. Oh my God, it feels so much better. And dare I say that your reflexes are gonna be much quicker because instead of having to travel your whole finger in order to press 
the button, the distance between here and here is much less, so you have a faster reflex. While we're at the design, let's take a look at what the mouse is made of. This has a very nice silicone rubbery type of material. It just feels really nice. It's indented where the thumb is, if you can see that here. Your thumb just slips right over there. And on the other side, you have another indent for where your uh, other fingers go. Your hand just kind of simply slides over that area there. And it feels really nice too. It's, you can, I can, kind of do this all day long and, you know, not feel squeamish at all. It feels nice, it really does. The top part here is made of a harder plastic. Mm, this is where your fingers, your tapping fingers are gonna go. And uh, you have your regular scroll mouse here, which is made of rubber. And you have a DPI switch over here. So this part never gets touched, the front. If you look underneath, you have some large skates on the top and the bottom there easily glides over and you have another switch there which you'll use for lighting which you'll see later so let's unravel the line this line is 1.8 meters long it's almost like six feet it goes from the tip of you know one arm one hand to the tip of my other hand we connect this using a typical usb a cable the mouse works with all major operating systems. This includes the PC, this includes Macs and Linux, uh, but on the downside, the software that you use to control and customize your buttons and everything only comes in a PC. So unfortunately, if you're a Mac or a Linux user, that's not available right now at least. Uh, but the great thing about the software is that it's not bloated. It's small and condensed. If you look at the Razer Synapse software, it's like several hundreds of megabytes big. This is 16 megabytes, really small, really tight. And if we open up the software, here is the control interface. You have all of these buttons that you can assign to something other than, you know, like a left button. You can change it to whatever you want. So maybe you don't use these side buttons and you can make it copy and paste. Whatever you want to do, you can assign using this area there. You have a macro manager. You can record macros of any of the functions you want to do. And this is access sensitivity. Let's say that this is, I'm going upper left to upper right right now, okay? Evenly on this mouse. If I change this x-axis really low, the x-axis will only move a little bit while the y-axis moves normally. So you have uncanny control of your mouse movement here. As I said before, this mouse was built for gaming in mind. That's the second objective. And it's got a really high-end optical sensor made by PixArt. Uh, they're in the industry of making gaming sensors. And that's what this mouse has inside here. It's got a PixArt 3336 sensor, which is up there with the high end of gaming mice sensors. Uh, sitting between the 3360 and the 3330. Now, the 3360 has a really high resolution rate of, I think it's like 12,000, while the 3330 has a 7,200. This guy here has a resolution of, what does that even say? 1,800 DPI's. Now that's one of the downsides of this software here. You can't maximize this piece of software on the screen it stays this small, so it's hard to see with these little numbers there on the screen. If you're getting old like me and your eyes are starting to be like, what the hell is that saying? You know, you need sharper eyes than mine, I guess. <laughs> most standard mice would have a DPI setting of 400 or 800, uh, but most esports gamers would use between 800 and 1600. So no one uses 10,000 DPI granted, but it does point to the accuracy of the sensor and it is there if you should need it. A Windows PC will default a mouse polling rate to 125 hertz. This guy here defaults to 1000 hertz, so it'll check a thousand times a second about where the mouse is and uh, the more it checks, the more accurate it can be. So it defaults to 1000 and you can actually change the polling rate using this software. And I know of high-end mice that don't give you that ability. So if you need to lower this, you can go to here and go to say 500, 250, or 125, which is what the standard regular standard mouse is. 
but for any kind of gaming, you can go up to 1000 Hertz. Tracking speed is 250 inches per second, which is insane. Uh, if you compare that to a regular standard mouse, your tracking speed would be between 16 and 40 because you're gonna be clicking on an Excel spreadsheet or a Word document. You're not gonna be moving your mouse around like crazy. And IPS is the maximum speed that you can move your mouse and obtain accurate tracking. So the higher the number, the better. The acceleration on this mouse is 50G, whereas a typical mouse would have 8G. So this here is a serious gaming mouse. Although again, you don't have to be a gamer to use this mouse. Objective number one, was to eradicate carpal tunnel syndrome and any kind of stiffness having to do with your hand. If we look on the right side, you can change the resolution of your mouse to whatever you like. There are six different settings with different colors associated. You could always change those colors. And this is associated with the color on your mouse. You see this breathing here. It's blue right now, so we are at 1000 DPI. This is at breath. There's three different settings. You can put it to static, in which case it sticks with the color. You can set the brightness of it to 75% and 50%. This is 50%. Uh, you could turn it to zero, which is turning it off. And anything in between. Let me turn off the light here so you can get a better idea. This is static. It stays without changing colors. If we change it to breath, the colors start breathing. It gets brighter and then it gets darker and then it gets brighter again. And the last one is called neon. Neon shifts through different colors and keeps changing. So it goes from red, it'll go through orange, it'll eventually shift to blue and all these other different colors. I like keeping mine at static and just to save on electricity, I'll keep mine at 25%, just to know what setting I'm on here on the DPI settings. Now you can change DPI settings by pressing this middle button over here. Let me turn the light back up. And you press this and it'll shift through all the different settings. And you can see on the mouse, the color, it's green now. And on the app, you can see what this color refers to. The next one will be 4000 DPI and you can cycle through. And when I get to the top DPI setting, 10,800, the mere touch is gonna move the mouse cursor all the way to the other side. And you can't really, this is not This is not a good idea. If we scroll down on the right side, this caught me by surprise. I found this by purely by accident. Uh, you can, there's more, <laughs> there's more settings. Scroll down and you'll see you can, there's a different way to set a mouse speed using this guy here, look at that. And if you do this, it goes insanely fast. It's just a different way of selecting your speed. You can do a double click speed and scroll speed using this software. The cycle of DPI settings. You have to scroll through all six before you're able to get to the one that you want. So I don't know if it's possible, but QuadraClicks, if you're listening, here's a wish list, please let us be able to select the number of DPI settings we want to use, be it two or three, uh, and not all six if we don't want to. And that's basically it for the software. You can set your DPI settings, even your poll ratings, you know, assign your buttons and all of that stuff. Uh, kudos, QuadraClicks. All of this in 16 megabyte size, well done. I'll do this. There we go. Ah, uh, go away. I wanted the gun to like, you know, shoot these guys, but there we go. So basically I'm very easily kind of tapping on these buttons here. So not a lot of stress at all. And that's basically what I wanted to show you is that you don't need to be pushing down very, very hard. You'll just see me tapping very lightly, as you can see here. With the lights on, I can hardly see the screen. That's why I'm playing so badly, but you get the picture of uh, 
of how the fingers actually work. You don't curl up your fingers like this. And that's pretty much it for the Quadra Clicks Rabbit Mouse. They're out to save the world one hand at a time, especially if you're a gamer, because the gamers are the ones that do the most clicking on these bad boys. So if you're out to, if you want to save your hand, and I can speak from experience, uh, weekends of gaming, eight hour, 12 hour stints, uh, ended up hurting my hands a lot less than traditional gaming mice. So over time, I can only see this getting better. Good for the hand, good for ergonomics, good for gamers, great piece of software. Try it out for yourself. It might take some time for your hand to get used to, but over the long term, it'll do wonders for the health of your hand. Thank you very much for watching this video and our look into this mouse. If you want to check out prices, we've listed Amazon affiliate links down below in the notes. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the First Look YouTube channel, please feel free to do so right now, and we shall see you all again next time.